We are made in the image of God, but we are not God. We are of the same form as God, but not the same substance as God. When God creates, He creates in an absolute sense. God creates absolute form. We do not know what this means in a technical sense, but we see the result. Perhaps if we think of our own life, as the experiences of a fictional character in a story, and we think of the story's plot as forming the world we see, we can grasp what it means to be a man in relation to what it means to be God. When God speaks, His ideas create what we see as real things. When mankind talks about reality, he uses propositions that he considers factual, such as it is raining or that man is my father. Propositions attempt to convey a picture of the world, but the picture is always subjective. The listener has to share the same perspective as the speaker if he or she is to understand the proposition. Man in his speech talks about what God spoke into existence. We can only speak about ideas that were formed by God. In the reality of God, it is raining and not raining. Everything is and is not with God, because the Word of God encompasses all time and space. However, it is better to say that time and space do not impact God. The meta-existence of God is what confounds atheists. The mission of all atheists is to materialize God into time and space. This is akin to a character in a story demanding the author be made part of the story. But the author cannot be created by the same process that created the story. God is above creation, as an author is above the book he writes. The author might write a crime novel and in it have the protagonists mull over the facts of the case. But any thinking done by the characters is determined by the author and the plot and the personality of the different characters as devised by the author. The thinking of the characters do not create irrelevant and independent events that carry on regardless of the main storyline. The plot of the story is the only reality the characters of the story know. Our thinking does not create reality other than the artificial reality of the plays and novels we write. The thinking of God is the thinking of an author, and we are as the characters of a story devised by God. Being characters the events and the descriptors seem real and are real to us. Yet the comparison of the creations of man with the creations of God is akin to the comparison of the Creator with the created. Our creations are no more like us than we are like God. The form is similar, but the substance of our creation is distinct. When we see a tree, the tree is real to us. It is not the product of our minds, though the tree is in our minds. The only tree we know is a visual representation contained in our mind, not as a product of our minds but as a component. We think these images are in the brain, but the brain is a visual representation of our mind. It is no more real than the tree. When we cut down a tree, it is the creation of information. We see an operation on a brain, and we cut down a tree. We conceive of these things within time and space as a way to administrate our experiences. The forming of reality is the spirit putting information into a form that can be administrated. Time and space are operational categories. But of course, what we do and see is 100% real to us, because it is what God created. Information created by God as He spoke the world into existence is real to us because we are of the same substance as the rest of creation. There is no difference between the physically real and the created, because what is created is real by virtue of it having been created. But all we see and deal with operationally is information. This truth might not seem an important distinction, but it means language and definitions are significant in ways naturalists do not realize. It is important how we define God and think of justice. They are not just words, they represent the substance of creation. If we claim God does not exist or that justice is defined by the law, we create a different reality than were we to admit God does exist and justice is absolute and quantifiable. The ultimate difference between God and man is that God defines reality by his spoken word. 
When God thinks, His imagery is all-powerful because in our frame of reference, His thoughts are real. When man thinks it is godly or demonic, our thoughts adhere to the truth of God or they deny the truth. But we do not get to deny the truth without repercussions. To create lies is to create a false reality. Man is constrained by logic, God is not. Logic cannot explain God, but logic when followed takes us to God. There is nothing in creation that is greater than the Creator. The author cannot be known by his works. If God created logic, it is illogical to suppose God is contained in or constrained by the rules he created. Logic is attached to the way God created and part of the divine creation, like the plot in a story but so far as God is concerned logic is artificial. Truth is known by its coherence. Work of man can be science fiction or history, but it must follow a path that has no internal conflicts or contradictions. The more detail and conciseness, the more important the cohesion is, of the parts. A story is readable and an idea plausible, so long as it does not invalidate itself by inconsistent propositions. The Bible taught man that reality is a created and coherent whole, therefore, we learn that the world is intelligible. Man learned to study the Bible to learn the written truth, then he began to study the world, to understand the created truth and through these things, the mind of God. Christians created monasteries to study the Word of God and the monasteries created universities to study the creation of God. The laity created businesses to do the work of God. Behind it all was the belief a single, unitary and infinite mind created all things and created them in a way that was good. However, this was not the only force active in the world. While there was in the West a concerted effort to learn about God, from God, there were others who considered if there might not be a shorter route to wisdom and its rewards. There were people who still dwelled on whether God really did say, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. There were those who questioned if there were paths close to us or were there ways to circumvent the repercussions. Man is not just intelligent, he is a gambler. Mankind computes the odds. He looks at a situation. He looks at the possible outcomes. He looks at the odds of the different outcomes occurring depending on which option is taken. We will not accept we will surely die, because there are ways to mitigate risk. Man in Babylon lives in a relativist universe in which probabilities predominate. Truth is contingent and nothing is necessary. That is, in a contingent universe there is no sure and certain outcome. The wise Babylonian is able to ensure himself against future risk and mitigate the possibility of a negative outcome. We can accumulate property and take out insurance and make promises to deliver at some future date. But God has no risk or exposure to risk and has no future in which there is less than a perfect outcome. God is the standard of God, man requires a standard greater than himself. This need for something greater than ourselves to judge us, is why we need the church. Yet, we are not to be judgmental. Being judgmental means, it is not for the individual judge. We do not judge by the yardstick of our own values. The church must judge itself according to the will and word of God. In other words, it is the church as the manifestation of God on earth, through which justice is done. Justice is what is called the reconciliation of accounts. Injustice is the corruption of account by means of a process called freeloading. Costs are created off the books, that is not paid for. Economists call the process of passing costs onto society and future generations, externalization. Costs not paid at sight are ultimately transferred to society and future generations. Writers often remark how present generations enjoy benefits the cost of which will be borne by their children. But any benefit enjoyed by one person and paid for by another is freeloading. The five laws of man are these. We own only what we create. We have no claim on anything created by another. 
no one has a claim on anything created by us. We are not obliged by costs created by others. No one is obliged because of costs created by us. By the five laws civilization is created. When they are not embraced subsistence living is the best that can be managed. Yet, we rarely think of governments and businesses as freeloaders, but they both sponge off God, both claim what belongs to God as theirs, while they prosper off what God created. Because a person acquires physical property does not give him unrestricted right to leech off this property. Serfdom, slavery and capitalism permit property owners to claim rent in perpetuity, without adding value to it. But everything God does creates value. The universe is good because it has value. The most we can do is to add value to what exists. But we have no claim on what God created, and so even though we have a right to our wages, we do not have a right to unearned income of any sort. The line between God and man is logical, we are substantially the same but what God does is first-level hermeneutics and what man does is apologetic. Mankind's purpose is to understand and explain the first-level interpretation of God. God explains what good and evil is. He explains what the church is and what reality is. God truth is the source of all information. Christians apologize for these definitions by explaining analytically the logical necessity for this interpretation. Apologetic unravels the truth from all of the speculation and hypothesis using analytical deduction supplemented by empirical demonstrations. At the heart of logic is the axiom, God exists. Assuming this proposition, all other truth is deductible from it. The truth can be deduced from God. The truth cannot be deduced from man or by man without the intervention of God. God created all narrative truth, but all logical truth is likewise deductible from the proposition of God. Nothing can be deduced from the existence of man, other than there is a God.